What's up guys? Today we're going to be checking out the Anchor Nebula Cosmos Max 4K DLP projector. First off, shout out to Anchor for sending this over to us for review. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed and see what we get inside. So packaging looks to be pretty nice. Once we pop open the lid, we are greeted with the projector itself. It's an interesting design. Underneath the top portion here, we have the remote control. Nice little plastic remote. Batteries for the remote control. The power cord, power brick, and some documentation. Now this is a pretty interesting design. I've never seen a projector quite like this before. It's kind of a flat ovular shape. Up front we have the lens as well as a sensor. Around back we've got the power button, as well as your ins and outs. You've got the power input, HDMI in one, which is ARC compatible, HDMI input two, USB input, second USB input, and an optical output. It's got four speakers built into it, which you can see here from the, uh, from the grills on the front and on the rear. It's supposed to have 360 degree audio, so I'm assuming it goes around the entire circumference of the projector. They are 10 watts a piece for a total of 40 watts. It runs on Android TV, Android TV 9.0. It is a 4K projector, so 3840 by 2160. It uses a TI DLP chip, so it is natively 1080p. Although with pixel shifting technology, you will get 4K resolution out of it. It's a fairly heavy projector. It weighs, I think, 7.2 pounds. Size-wise, it is 13.8 inches wide by 9.8 inches deep by only three 0.9 inches in height. So it's a fairly compact projector and should be easy to place pretty much anywhere in your house. And it is fairly bright. It's rated at 1500 ANSI lumens. So let's go ahead, let's get this thing set up in the theater and I'll give you some thoughts and impressions. I'm gonna place the projector in my dedicated theater projecting on a Stuart Harmony G2 acoustically transparent screen. It's a bit overkill for this projector, but it'll show off how good the projector is. I'm going to place the projector on a tripod roughly 10 feet away from the screen for a 100 inch size. Per their specs, the max recommended screen size is 150 inches. Once you power on the projector, you're going to have to pair the remote. When that's connected, you're going to choose your language, connect to the internet, and sign into your Google account. Give it some permissions and download some popular apps. The projector has Google Voice support as well as Chromecast built in. Once you get all that done, you're going to be taken to the Android TV homepage. This is where you're going to see all of your apps congregated all into one. So you've got like Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, YouTube, all your recommended videos per app. It's a, also, it's pretty quick user interface as well. So Android TV 9.0 is actually pretty snappy on the Cosmos Max. But let's take a quick look at some of the settings. I'm not going to go over all of the settings because if you are familiar with Android TV, all of these settings are, same, are the same across the board. Let's just jump into the projector settings. First option we have are the picture settings. Under picture mode, you have standard, movie, and office. We'll take a look at this a little bit more in depth after we start playing some content. You've got a brightness slider, a contrast slider, and under advanced settings, you've got saturation, hue, gain, color temperature, and gamma. You can choose between EN Photo, Enhanced, Linear, Max Bright, Gamma 2, Gamma 1.8. And here you can reset everything back to default. Under Wall Color, if you are not using a screen, you can choose between all of these color options. Of course, white is going to always be the best to give you the most accurate colors, so if at all possible, use a white wall or a white screen. For HDR, this is HDR compatible. You can turn that on and off here. Keystone correction, if you want, this can automatically keystone correct your projector, or you can manually do this yourself by doing vertical. And go up or down. If you can see here, if you're using keystone correction, you can still see the outline of the actual image itself, how it's kind of gray in this area here and on the bottom. This is all, these are all pixels right here. So if you are actually using the keystone correction, you are chopping away at those unused pixels. 
So if at all possible, it is always the best to get your screen squared up perfectly. Otherwise, you're just wasting, you're wasting all of this, uh, you're wasting all those pixels by digitally manipulating it. So you don't want to do this. You don't want to waste all that, all those pixels. You just want to get it as square as possible. So I would avoid that at all costs. And you can do the same for a horizontal keystone as well. You can do the left side or the right side. And if you want a little bit more granular control, you can do, you can do each corner individually, which I get it. Not everybody has a perfect, has a perfectly square space, but, um, but it is best to square up your screen as much as possible before attempting to use any of these settings. And next you have a digital zoom. This is not an optical zoom. So if you are going to use this, you're going to find that just like the digital keystone, you're going to be eating away at unused pixels, like that whole border there, all unused pixels. So you do not want to use zoom just like you don't want to use digital keystone. And then here is the autofocus correction, which will do a very good job at automatically focusing the projector on its own. If you want to manually focus it, just tap on the focus button and then tap on left or right and you can manually adjust that yourself. But I do find that it does a pretty good job at doing it automatically. Under projector mode, you've got auto, front projection, rear projection, rear inverted, and front inverted. We are gonna go back to front projection. So you could mount this on your ceiling if you wanted to. Under audio settings, you can choose PCM or raw output if you're outputting to an AVR. And the sound output device, you've got auto or the optical out. Since we're not using this in a receiver or a processor, we're just going to keep that as is. Under HDMI, you can switch your HDMI inputs from this screen here. There are two HDMI inputs. And under CEC settings, you've got CEC control, CEC power on off, and arc switch. This is also an HDMI 2.0 compliant device, so no HDMI 2.1. So you want to keep that on so you can get 4K HDR functioning properly. And there is also a game mode if you have a video game console or PC connected up to it. Since this is a 4K HDR projector, let's check out a few apps to see if 4K HDR works. First app being YouTube. Now we're just going to have to go right in here under the settings. And as you can see under picture options or video quality, you can see that it does indeed support 4K with HDR. Go ahead and back on out of this. Check out Amazon Prime. We can see here by the menu that it does support UHD and HDR. So let's click on resume and see what kind of picture quality we get. So it doesn't actually give you like a display that tells you that it's playing in HDR. But if we go under projector settings, you can turn HDR off and you can see how it kind of dulls down the image. Turn it back on. You can see the color comes right back on. So 4K and HDR works properly on the Amazon Prime app. Next up, let's check out Vudu. So once we click on Godzilla, you can see that I did purchase this movie in UHD, but you can only watch it in SD. Maybe this is just a one-off, so let's check out a different title. Let's go on over to Monster Hunter. And again, purchased in UHD, but you can only watch it in SD. And in the upper right-hand corner there, also it says SD. And you can pretty easily tell that this is only in standard definition because it's a very soft pixelated image. So if you're going to watch Voodoo, I'd probably use like an Apple TV or a Roku or something or an external device because this is this quality does not look good for this particular app. Let's jump out of that and just check Disney Plus. So for Disney Plus, it does support 4K Ultra HD and HDR10. And that is one nice, very sharp, crispy looking picture right there. That's one thing I like about DLPs is that the image is like razor sharp. You can see all kinds of detail. So 4K HDR does work within this particular app as well. And let's jump out of that and check out maybe the most popular app that folks are going to use, which is Netflix. So it's not readily available in the store. So we're going to actually have to search it ourselves. It would seem that the Cosmos Max is not a Netflix certified projector. So you're going to have to download the Nebula Manager from the Google Play Store first. And then we're going to have to download it within that app. 
So once you get that opened up, it is going to download the mobile version of Netflix. As you can see in the upper right corner there, there's actually a Chromecast button right there. So this is like the same app that you would get on your cell phone. I mean, you could still use the remote to navigate it with. So uh, let's jump in and check out Hubie Halloween, which I know is in 4K HDR or Dolby Vision. But you can see here that it's, it's only gonna play back in HD. Even for an HD image, that actually looks really good for this projector. Let's just jump in here, check the HDR settings. So yeah, that's only standard definition. But Netflix does work, you're just gonna have to use the workaround to get to it. All right, let's take a look at a couple of the picture modes here. First, we're looking at, this is obviously the Lion King. The first one is under standard. Let's pop into movie mode. You can see that the overall picture does get a bit warmer, a little bit more, more sepia to it, a little bit more orangier tinge to it. Definitely warmer than standard. Then let's jump into office. And this here, you can see it just kind of takes down the brightness a bit more. So I would assume that if you're doing office work, you don't want to have your desktop, if it's bright white, if you're typing papers to be so, so bright, kind of burning your retinas. So office is a bit dimmer than the other two modes. But I think if you want maybe the most pleasing mode, you might want to stick with movie. But if you do want the brightest mode, then I would probably stick with standard. It's also cooler looking. You can tell automatically once you pop over from movie to standard. It's a cooler tone overall. Under gamma, you have a few presets here as well. You've got N photo, which is on by default. You've got enhanced, which kind of kind of bumps up the contrast levels a bit. Linear, which blows everything out, makes everything look flat, almost as if it doesn't have HDR active. Although it does bring out a lot more details in the shadows. It's just that everything is all raised. The black levels are all raised, colors are flatter, although it's just not a pleasing look. Next up is max bright, which kind of takes down the brightness, bumps up the contrast level, brings up the black levels, makes the speculars pop a lot more, but also with the specular highlights, the bright white parts that you can see over here. There's not much detail being seen there, so everything looks to be kind of clipped. Also on the, on the ground at the bottom here. And then we have Gamma 2.0, so you can see more detail back in those two areas that I pointed out, in the water, on the river, and also on the on the ground as well you get more detail back black level is not as deep and dark but there's better shadow detail and better highlight detail and the same thing for gamma 1.8 everything's raised a bit more but you can see a bit more shadow detail and a little bit more detail in the highlighted areas although you do give up some of that some of that black contrast and of course you can change color temperature rgb you can also go into your gain you can adjust that as well if you have measurement tools but for me, I find that I kind of like the standard mode because it does give a nice bright, punchy image. Right now, I've got it on standard mode with a gamma of 2.0. And as you can see here, for this particular projector at this price point, it throws an incredibly sharp image. It looks very similar to other DLP projectors in this price range. So you will get that very crisp DLP sharpness. The black levels are decent they are your standard dlp black levels not the best shadow detail also not the best highlight detail some of the highlight stuff does get clipped some of the black levels also get, get crushed as well so you kind of have to find the medium ground between not clipping detail and also not crushing detail as well i mean you can see all the little individual strands of hair in any one of these animals it's super sharp super crisp the colors look really great there's no doubt about that it's got some fantastic punch I think if you're gonna build a somewhat budget home theater and you, you definitely want a big screen, this is quite a really good image. There are no other options like motion flow or motion interpolation, nothing like that, or frame interpolation. So you're not gonna get soap opera effect. It's just really kind of a bare bones projector. Sound quality is pretty decent. I've got the projector in my home theater right now kind of behind my main listening seat. So I'm sitting really close to it. I think if you have kind of a smallish to medium sized room that the speakers in this projector should fill a pretty decently sized space. If you got something like gigantic, like a open floor plan or something like that, um, you might want to get a sound bar or hook this up to your AVR or processor. The vocals are a little bit thin, but 
you know, these are pretty small speakers. It's not gonna like rock your world, but it will do just perfectly fine if you don't have an audio system. Fan noise can get pretty loud, to be honest with you. I am sitting maybe about five feet from it right now. And I'm just gonna not say anything and let you guys listen to the fan noise. So it isn't the quietest projector I've ever heard, and the fan noise will kind of ramp up and ramp down depending on how bright or dark that the scene is. At the time of this video, the Nebula Cosmos Max is 1750, although it might be on sale depending on when you watch the video. As far as the performance, I found the image to be very similar to many of the other small form factor Android DLP projectors out there, which is a good thing. It's a bright projector that'll light up a screen in a totally dark room, but also has enough output to use with some light background lights on. At this price point, as with all the other under 5K DLP projectors I've tried, there are some limitations for peak highlight detail and shadow detail. Whites can run a bit too hot, and black levels can be a bit muddy. If you want better image performance, you're gonna have to spend a lot more money. One thing I'd like to see in future iteration would be an optical zoom. I'm sure to keep the price down, they opted for the digital zoom, but if you want to maintain image quality at any size, you're gonna need an optical zoom. With that being said, I think this is a solid performer and makes for a very nice home theater experience. The colors are bright and vivid, and the picture quality is razor sharp. It's not a competitive gaming projector, but if you're into casual gaming, the Cosmos Max should do the job just fine. The audio covers a wide area not only in front of the projector, but behind it as well, with its 360 degree inbuilt speakers. So if you need that portable temporary big screen solution, and don't want to carry along a soundbar, then this will fill a nicely sized space. It's also very slim and should slide in a bag relatively easy. All in all, if you're looking for a big screen movie night with a great image and good sound, then you might want to consider the Nebula Cosmos Max 4K. Now if you do want to pick this projector up, I'll leave some links for it down below in the video's description. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video if you found it useful, and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you again in the next video.